Okay, so tonight I want to look at cause and effect. Cause and effect. And I want to look at some scriptures from the book of Proverbs, from Luke's Gospel, and from Mark's Gospel. Cause and effect. But before I go any further, I want to give a quick shout out to two young brothers in America. Their names are Hollis and Houston. Hollis and Houston, your dad has told me that you've been watching these uploads and you've been following the channel and you've been enjoying the Word of God. So please continue to tune in and listen to what I'm saying and then apply it to your lives, okay? It's not just about listening. It's not just about reading your Bibles, you two guys. It's about applying what you know into your day-to-day -day life. So this applies to the young people watching. It applies to the middle-aged people watching. And it applies to the old people watching this channel as well. It's all about the application of the Word. You can read the Word. You can study the Word. But if you don't apply the Word, what use is it? You have to apply it to your life. Application. Hollis, Houston, apply the Word of God to your lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to look at cause and effect tonight. <clears throat> what am I talking about? Well... There's a story in the Bible I'm sure you're all familiar with where Jesus is asleep on a boat. He's crossing the sea and there's a big storm hits this boat. The disciples panic. They run in, they shake him, they wake him up and they say, Master, do you not care that we're going to die? Jesus rises up from his sleep, doesn't speak to the disciples, by the way, walks out onto the deck of the boat and rebukes the storm that is hitting that boat. Okay, so when people think of what Jesus did, they think, well, he rebuked the storm and he did. But I want to break the storm down into its component parts tonight. Because he addressed not just the storm overall, but he addressed the component parts of the storm to make sure that the storm would cease and not rise up again. So I want to look at Mark's gospel, chapter 4. And I'm only going to read the last three verses from verse 39 to verse 41. And he, Jesus, arose and rebuked the wind. He rebuked the wind. Not the storm, the wind. He rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. I want you to think about those words tonight. He rebuked the wind first. And then he spoke to the sea and said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Why did he do what he did? Well, the wind was causing the waves. The wind was the source of the storm. The cause of the storm was the wind. The effect of the wind was the waves. And the waves were filling the boat with water that they would sink and drown. So when Jesus came out and spoke into that situation, the first thing he did was address the cause. He spoke and rebuked the wind. And then he spoke to the sea and said, Peace be still. And the Bible says that the wind ceased. When Jesus rebuked the wind, it stopped. And there was a great calm because he spoke to the effect of the wind, the waves. And he said, peace be still. So there was a great calm. And he said unto the disciples, why are you so fearful? Why is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly. And said one to another, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The cause and the effect obey him. There's people tonight that are coming to us with problems. And we're ministering to the problem. We're ministering to the effect. But we're not looking for the cause. Or we don't want to dig deep enough to find the cause of the problem. So what we do is we come up with a short-term solution. We get rid of the effect, but we don't speak 
to the source of the problem or address the source of the problem. If Jesus had rose up and simply spoke to the sea and told it to be calm, it would have calmed down. But the wind would have continued to come and whip those waters up into waves. So the first thing that Jesus did, he spoke to the source of the problem, the wind. Then he spoke to the effect of the problem, the waves. And there was a great calm. When people come to us with issues, or when we examine our own lives for the issues in our own lives, we need to look at the cause and the effect. We can take care of things in the short term, short term solutions, but then we find the problems recur. They keep coming back. They keep coming back because the source has not been rebuked or dealt with. Maybe your attitude is the problem and your attitude manifests itself in certain ways. Like yesterday, I put up a video about the tongue and everyone confessed, oh, I have problems with my tongue. I can't control my tongue. I wrestle with this problem. Everyone has the same problem. <clears throat> so the question is, why does it keep occurring? Maybe we need to deal with the source of the problem. Why we're bad tempered? Why we're quick to fly off at the handle? Why we have no self-control? I don't know, you know. You know your situation and God knows your situation. Maybe instead of praying, God, keep my tongue under control, you should say, God, minister to the thing that's causing me to run off at the mouth. Day after day after day. Speak to the wind and rebuke it. Instead of just speaking to the waves and telling them to calm down. Cause and effect. I want to go to the book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs. And I want to look at two portions from Proverbs, actually. But I want to begin by looking at Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs 26, verses 20. And 21, see if this sounds familiar. Proverbs 26, verse 20. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. Where there is no wood or no fuel, the fire goes out. <laughs> and where there is no tail bearer, or no gossip, the strife ceases. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. And where the tail burr is gone from, the strife ceases. There's a lot of strife around at the minute. A lot of strife. People are trying to deal with the strife. Trying to deal with the strife. It's not going to work. You need to deal with the source. You need to deal with the cause. You need to find the tail burr and get rid of them. Find out who's causing the problem and get rid of them. Oh, is that Christian? Is that Christ-like? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're to love people, but it doesn't mean we should tolerate their nonsense. Tolerating nonsense. That is stupidity. And you wonder why the problems keep coming up again and again and again and again. Because you're not dealing with the source. You're dealing with the effects. Trying to patch things up. Patch relationships up. You need to take out the tail burr. And the strife will cease. As coals are to burning coals. And wood to a fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. They like to set fires. They like to set fires and watch them burn and grow bigger and bigger. Coals to burning coals, wood to the fire. Remove the tail burr and the strife will cease. Think about that. 
Proverbs chapter 16, verse 28. A froward man sows strife. A troublemaker sows strife. And a whisperer, a whisperer. A whisperer separates chief friends. There's a lot of whispers running around at the moment. Whispering here, whispering there. You think God doesn't hear you? You think God doesn't hear you because your voice is low? You think God doesn't read your emails? You think God doesn't read your little group chats? Your little closed chats? Think God doesn't see them? Think God doesn't know what you're really like? You think God doesn't tell other people supernaturally what you're up to? You need to think about this. Whispering, separating chief friends. A whisperer separates chief friends and a fraud man sows strife. You need to root out the whispers. You need to root out the fraud men and women. And you need to get rid of the tail bearers and the strife will cease. You need to be brutal or you're always gonna have problems in this area. Luke's Gospel, and I'm finishing with this. Jesus spoke a parable unto them and said, Let the blind lead the blind, for sooner or later they'll all end up in a ditch. Have you found yourself in a ditch? Find yourself in a ditch. You keep falling into holes. Keep falling into the ditch. You keep climbing out. But then you're back in. And then you climb out. And then you're back in. Scrambling up the sides of the ditch. Why not just avoid the ditch? Or the ditches? Well, how can I do that? I, I keep falling down. Maybe you're following the wrong people. Maybe you're following a blind guide. And where the blind guide goes, you go. And if he ends up in a hole, you end up in the hole with him. Or her, actually. And you wonder why you keep going into the hole. Because you're following a blind guide. Why? Because you're blind yourself. You don't see where you're going. You don't see where your feet are falling. Because your eyes are fixed, your blind eyes, your spiritually blind eyes are fixed on someone else. What's the solution? The solution is this. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word of God is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Stop following blind people. Open your eyes spiritually by delving and digging deep into God's word. Don't, be a, don't just be a blind follower. Don't be a lemming. You know what a lemming is? A little furry animal that runs around in a little pack of furry animals and they all run up to the edge of a cliff and they all run off together because they're blind and they're stupid. Don't be a lemming tonight. running around in a little pack of lemmings. You need to have your eyes open by the word and the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Cause and effect. Deal with the cause, the effects will cease. God bless each and every one of you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.